Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm continuing with my Streamlit series. And in this video, I want to just give a very simple introduction to writing Streamlit program. I'm going to put a link in the description to where I walk you through how to create a virtual environment. And lucky for you, it shows you also how to install Streamlit and do a test that it actually is running correctly. So assuming you got through that and everything looks good, now you can jump in and start coding and I'll show you how right here. Now I need to change into my virtual environment and I set up a batch file already because I hate to keep typing the same thing over and over again. So I say set env, which is my batch file. And you see over to the left, it shows you what virtual environment I'm in. And since my last video, I'm gonna call it lesson one. This will be lesson two. I'm gonna do two parts to lesson two. One is a really basic video that has some shortcomings. And then I'll do an enhanced version of the same script that shows you how to get around those weaknesses. So I'm in here now and in order in order to get my program up and running, I need to type in at the command line. So I'm in here. You're going to have to make sure you have a terminal window open. My program is here, but it doesn't have to be open. And I'm just going to run it from the terminal. So I have to type in streamlet base run and then the name of my script, which in this case is kind of long. Lesson 02 basic.py. Let's hope I typed it right. What's going to happen is it's going to automatically kick off the server and open your browser to point to that server. So a cool thing about Streamlit is you get a built-in web server and you can test and debug and have all your fun working locally. What's really nice about that too is you could give someone your Streamlit program and just tell them what they need to install if there's extra libraries or give them the requirements file and they could just run it locally. So it's very easy to set up and run. And because it has a local server, people can run things even locally. So let's look at what's going on here. Now we know we, we're running, this is my program and I'll walk through it quick and then I'll show you how I wrote it. So first we have a nice little message here, suitable for framing, welcome to number guess. This is just kind of a goofy program. You guess a number from one to 10, but it gives me a way to show you how to program Streamlit. So here's a big title of our screen. Then we have some smaller text we want to display. And here we have a label with a text box. So we can put in here any number we want. And this is an input box. And then we have some buttons and you notice the buttons are stacked. That's the default way that Streamlit will put any objects on the screen. If you'll notice, everything's just stacked. In the next video, I'll show you how to fix that so that you can arrange them the way you like. But for now, we'll take the default. So we're going to guess a number. Number. And if I want to get a new number, I can just click start again. It'll get me a new number. I can click on make guess, which will check and see if that's the number between one and 10. It's randomly created in the background. And I can say show number and you'll see it says the number is. So it's kind of cheating, but it's telling me what the number is. And the other thing I want to show you is I can click on this thing help and I have this what's called an extension window and I can put extra information in here. So it's something that I can expand and contract. So that's really handy. And this is just a sample of the kinds of things you can do with Streamlit. Very easy to do. I'll show you the commands right now, but I do want to highlight a problem right off the bat. When I say show number, it keeps giving me a new number. This is problem number one with working in Streamlit. I know I'm just starting to show you and I'm already telling you about problems with it. Well, the problem is that Streamlit always starts at the top of the script and runs all the way to the bottom. It does that when you click any button or create any event in the window, which is pretty much anything you do. This is a problem, but there's a very easy way to fix it. You've got to save your state. That's something I'll show later, but at least now you get the sense of, okay, something pretty simple here up and running. So let me show you the code. So how did this work? Well, the first thing you have to do is, as always in Python, we import our libraries. So this is the program right here, lesson 02 underscore basic.py. Most important, of course, is bring in Streamlit. And the standard when you do this everywhere, I see coding at least, is import Streamlit as ST. And all of the Streamlit commands will be prefixed with ST. Here, I need to bring in a library to get random numbers. So I did that. And then I want to print that fancy title at the top. So I can use ST title. And ST title is automatically just setting a font that's really large, like markdown, pound one, you know, really large title. That's what that will do. ST write could also be used to do that. And you'll notice here, I'm using some markdown within ST write. ST write is kind of called the Swiss army knife of Streamlit because it's very intelligent. If I use markdown, it will include it. If I tell it to print any text, it just prints it. But if I even tell it to print something like a pandas data frame, it prints it, but it actually displays it in a container that gives me sort abilities and it, and it formats it really nicely. So it's a pretty cool thing. ST write, remember that it's a good default to go to. So I've got my little titles at the top, but I need a random number. So I'm going to say random dot rand range one to 10, and that will give me a random number between one and 10, which I will store in num. Now I need a text box. 
ST text input is how I create a text box for input. So text input is the widget that I'm going to be creating. And again, I need to prefix it with ST and I can give it a prompt, enter a number from one to 10, and I can even give it a default like one. Now notice because that's a text input, I want to make sure I'm returning an int. So I'm going to wrap this in a function int, which will force this into an int or cast it to an integer. And I'm going to return the result to txt underscore guess. Now, when you're doing widgets in any kind of, you know, GUI programming, it's pretty common to see that you prefix whatever widget you're referencing with some sort of nomenclature usually three characters. My standard, and this goes back to the old Windows days, is like a text box is typically TXT. So I'm saying TXT underscore guess, and that's going to get the value of what's returned from that. For buttons, I just say, sometimes people say CMD for like command button. I like to say BTN underscore, and here I'm saying BTN underscore start, and that was that start button you saw on the screen. And then I have the one for guessing, right? Guess here. So BTN guess equal STN button, make a guess, which just means it's going to check and see if what you entered is correct. And then here we'll say if BTN underscore guess, then do something. Now, what does that mean? If BTN underscore guess, what it means is if you click this button, that's what this is saying. So it's saying, hey, if you click this button, then do this logic. So here I'm going to say if TXT guess equal equal num, the random number, then write you in. And I'll show you something because I missed doing this, but it does this cool thing with balloons. It's just like an animation you can show, and I'll show you that in a minute. But if not, if that is not the case, you didn't get it right, it just says SD right, sorry, try again. Now the problem is it's constantly changing the number because we haven't got any state yet, but basically that's what it's supposed to do. And here you're going to say BTN show ST button show number. So here I'm creating that show button and I'm just saying show number. And if you click BTN show, then that's where it just showed you what the number is. Now, actually, I can't even get to winning it because it's going to keep changing every time I click the button and I'll really have to get lucky to even get it. So I'll hold off until the improved version. And then remember that nifty thing we had where we had to help and then we were able to expand the text. Well, that's called ST expander and we can give it like a little text to start with. But if the person clicks on it, then it displays this. This is a doc string in Python, right? Multi lines, ST right can handle it. A couple of cool things here though. You can use the width wrapper with most of these controls, anything that makes sense to use it. So, you know, you've probably used width file and then do something automatically closes it. You can use width with this ST expander and a number of other uh, widgets and controls so that you can kind of make it a little easier and more intuitive to read your code. And that's it. That's all that is going on in this program. I'm going to put a link to my GitHub repo where you can find this nifty program for your very own. And that's about it for this time. I know it's simple. I know it's basic, but hopefully you get a sense just how easy it is to write a program in Streamlit. This is not rocket science, but this is a web application. And you can see it was a very simple script. 90% of what we just saw was just standard Python code. And that's really the cool part of Streamlit. Now, I was surprised because I'm reading a book on Streamlit, which I'll put in my next video or somewhere in here, but I'm reading a book on it. And the authors of Streamlit actually intended this to be kind of a default GUI for Python. And I actually think they're right because that's why I went to it myself. It's hard to find an easy to use GUI when you're working in Python and the best built in is like TK enter, but it's not really that simple to use. It's a little more work. Whereas I think uh, Streamlit's really nice and very simple to jump into. And that's it for this video. So please like, share, subscribe, leave your comments. And until next time, I'm Paul and Foyer. We're all in this together. Thank you.